Hello and welcome to a L-Spec training video. Today we're going to go over a little bit more advanced feature, but one that has been requested. Um, this does require enterprise version of the software. And we're going to schedule a IEEE 519 report to be ran on a daily basis. So the first thing you want to do is go to your scheduler in the upper right hand corner. Select your server. And then select new task. Control and maintenance, export and report. So export is going to be if you want to have event files exported, um, information like that. Report is a bunch of predefined reports. So once we get to this page, we're going to select our IEEE 519 report and next. If this is the first time you download it, you will be downloading um, it from the server and it might take a few minutes, so be patient. We're going to give it a task name. Okay. And then advanced file saving options. If I want to save it somewhere specifically, I can set that here. And then if you look over here, you can see these different abbreviations. It's very helpful to use these. So you could have, see, your, your path, and then you want to have the year, the month, the day, or the year and the month for the folders. And it will then organize all your reports um, based on the information you're asking for here. So we can have a single task run, a scheduled task run, or an event-based task run. For the 519, we're going to go with a scheduled task run. Um, if we wanted to do single task for IEEE, there's an easier way to do that, which would be from the Power Quality tab, which we discussed in an earlier video. Event-based task run would be you want this task to run every time a certain event occurs. However, since this is the 519, which is based on a seven day rolling window, we're going to go with scheduled task run. Okay. So reoccurrence is how often do you want the report to run? So we're going to do daily and we're going to set it for every day or we could do every weekday and then you just say the first day of the week in this case it's Monday range of reoccurrence we want this to run from now until we stop it so we're not going to have a start or an end time runtime wait for data up to blank hours so some people may only have their enterprise software pulling data every 30 minutes every 40 minutes this gives you the chance to set that hey wait for all the data to come in and be processed for you know X amount of time I like to go with two hours it's a nice round even one and we're gonna start it at 12 a.m. in the morning now if you want to set any custom offshoots for that um, you're more than welcome to set that time off shoot there. Go to the next. So data duration. What is the duration from this data that we want? Well, we want one week. So every day we're getting the previous seven days worth data okay and then I have to put an hour buffer in here um, to kind of make sure that everything uh, comes in is processed and is ready to go for the for the report okay next here is how you select what device is going to be providing this report. So you want to make sure it's one that is always on that you're connected to and you don't have any problems with. Now, 
if you also have, say I had 15 liters that I keep adding them every day, then you can go into the tagging system and create tags. You'd only have to build this one time, and then every time you add a new meter, you could add that tag to it. Um, we discussed tagging in one of our previous quick tip videos, um, so if you need a refresher on that. But for now, we're just going to select the one component we want this report to run from. And we're going to select Next. Periodic only or events only. We're doing periodic only, which is we want it every day for the past seven days. These are all the compliance chapters of the 519 report. Okay. So we want all of those. And here's your summary. Now if you want SMS text or you want emails, assuming you've already set this up on your server, you would add the email address or the text number to let you know the reports run. And then it will deliver a copy of the PDF to your to your computer, to your email. Okay, and then once we're done, we hit finish and close. It's idle. The next execution it tells you when it's going to run the next time and schedule. Anytime you want to know if it's run or not, you can come into log. And it shows everything that has run and then everything that is scheduled to run. Okay. So if we go back to system, we need to check to make sure that this device is set up to do the 519 report. So we click on it. We go to power quality. Under compliance. We make sure that the 519 is checked. We can input the short circuit current here. Um, or we can leave that blank. We can go to energy after this. Maximum demand load current calculation type manual auto um, allows the software to determine what the demand load current is. Manual is if you know what it should be, you can input it in there and it'll take that value into consideration. I like to leave it as auto just to, to ensure I get a good report. Thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you do not miss any new videos. Like us on Facebook and connect with us on LinkedIn. Have a great day.